Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk about the death of the second hand market. Now, when I'm talking about the second hand market, I'm talking about physical games, physical media, physical movies, no matter what you want to look at, whatever your preferred method of collecting is, we are seeing a trend now in the world where physical second hand shops are going away. And while places like the Salvos will still collect physical media as people donate it, while, people, while things like um, CEX are downsizing, there will still be a second-hand market through eBay and Facebook Marketplace. So I'm not saying it's going away completely. But remember the days when you could go into like an EB Games or even like go into a JB Hi-Fi and they'd have a whole section of pre-owned. They'd have a usually a lot cheaper entry point for that. Well, now these days, you're not even seeing the cheaper entry point. It's essentially the same price in JB Hi-Fi for the brand new copy of it as it is for the pre-owned version. So why would I buy the pre-owned version? Well, that's what they want you to do. They want you to be programmed to pick the new versions. They want you to be programmed to say, hey, I don't want someone else's copy. It's the same price. Why would I pay that? And that's how they want you thinking about things because once the secondhand market goes away in these big retail shops, I'm not talking so much about online. When they go away, what happens? The secondhand market collapses. And you see stuff like what's happened with Nintendo games and Game Boy and all that, where it has just went insane. And now cartridges like GoldenEye and even like, I've got one down here that I showed in the previous video, Banjo-Kazooie boxed. This goes for like, what, $100, $200 now? I think I paid, what, like $50 for this. And that's when it was at the low point. But I mean, we are becoming a society of convenience. And while convenience might seem like, oh yeah, this is such a good idea, like yes, I could have everything available to me on a device, I can have everything available to me, I don't need to have the physical asset there, we are becoming reliant on it. And while, while people go more digital, there's going to be less physical media board. There's going to be less of, let's say, something I picked up the other day, Land of the Dead. Less of this board and more of the digital asset board. But what happens in 10, 20 odd years when they say, you know what? We don't think the zombie genre fits with our corporate identity. We don't think, who did this one? Universal. What happens if Universal goes under? And they say, oh, well, we don't think that fits with the Disney persona, or we don't think zombies fit with this. We might just bury that in the back of the Disney vault. What happens when that happens? That version, if no one's picked it up, I mean, people are going to pick this up, don't worry, it's Screen Factory, people are going to pick it up. But what happens when that happens? People are going to have to scramble to find, oh, well, I don't want to have no access to it online. I better go out and buy a physical copy. But everyone's either thrown away their physical copies or not bought it when it came out or whatever. Maybe they've degraded over time because people keep talking about DVDs breakdown over time on rot. And, you know, that's a true thing. But we're at this point now where we have prioritized convenience and it is really killing the secondhand market. Because, yeah, well, as I said at the beginning of this video, Facebook will still sell stuff. All these things, like, I can go and buy Atari games. I was showing this in a previous video. I sit down on the floor here. If you know when I put it down on the floor, you will have watched the previous video. <laughs> but, you know, I've got access to games from the Atari. Like, you would think, oh, Atari, those old things. Let's just get a game out of here. Let's get um, Super Action. I don't even know what's on this. Pitfall's on this. There we go. So, you know, I have access to a game from, what, 1977 or something, 1978, whenever that came out. What happens if Atari said, oh, well, we'll just have everyone back then, if the 70s had that available and said, oh, well, you don't even have to have the cartridge. We'll just like, we'll just provide it to you through a subscription and you will have access to everything and you'll be happy and all good. Where would we be right now with Atari games? And then you might say, oh, but they've emulated on the new consoles. You can, you can very easily get those, yeah. But what about Nintendo games? I mean, you look at the Pokemon games, there is a reason why Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow are going for absorbent amounts of money. It's because the secondhand market has went insane since 2020, for one, because they've started really pushing this whole narrative of, yeah, well, collectability. Obviously, collectability is in there. I will correct that. There is collectability in there because they're Pokemon games and they're things that people are nostalgic for. But there's also this whole idea that, well, I mean, we've got this new console, but we don't want to put those games out on Switch Online or whatever. We want people to go and buy the new version. We've remastered it. You know, there's a remaster there you should play. Pokemon, 
Let's go, Pikachu. Um, let's go, Eevee. You can choose. Eevee wasn't even a starter Pokemon, I don't believe, in the original. I think, was he a starter in Pokemon Yellow? I know you got Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow. I don't think he was a starter in the originals. But, you know, there's this whole trend of we are now becoming reliant on a digital service. And what happens when those digital services go offline? I mean, Atari has changed hands so many times over the years that if we didn't have physical cartridges, who knows what would have what Atari would look like right now in terms of playing their original games. I mean, we have a new console that can play these original games, which is why I went out and bought a bunch of them. But you know what I mean? Like, the fact that I can go out and buy an Atari game should show that physical media is important. Not so much now, because everyone has this idea of, oh, we can just throw everything away. But 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years from now, if it's lasted that long. And yes, you might say, but everything's going to break down over time. Everything's going to rot. Everything's going to do that. Yes, everything has a shelf life. I agree, everything has a shelf life. But it's all about how you keep it, and it's all about how you look after it. And it's all about, like, how often are you checking it? Now, the first thing I did when I bought these was I looked at the teeth. I got my light out, and I looked at the teeth of these games. And I was like, yeah, okay, they look pretty cool. Like, I'm happy with this. That's the first thing I did. And I was like, yeah, that means that the cartridge is in good condition, and the board inside is in good condition. Now, obviously, if the, go the board breaks, these are easily repairable. I mean, these are just components inside of these cartridges for the Atari. I can take them apart and essentially fix it with a soldering iron, you know? These are pretty easy to fix Atari games. And you can do the same thing with Nintendo. I think some Nintendo games from the Game Boy era, they had batteries in them. You just undo them and take the CMOS battery out and put a new one in, and your Pokemon games or whatever is as good to go as it first was. But we are very heavily relying on the secondhand market now. And you might say, but the same price, why would you buy the secondhand market? Well, it's because of what it represents. Look, the secondhand market, what happens when games essentially get traded in now? Some places won't even touch trade-ins now. I've seen CX refuse outright games that are trade-ins. I've seen EB Games outright refuse games that are trade-ins. I've seen it happening because they're like, we can't offload these. Nobody wants to buy secondhand. We cannot offload these. Um, you should probably try the... the uh, Cash converters or something. Try something on Facebook Marketplace, maybe your best chance. I've seen people get turned away at the counter with even PS5 games on disc. Of saying, oh, well, I've got these PS5 games. What can you give me for them? And they'll make them some insulting offer like, oh, well, we don't know if you can turn these. Would you take 20? We can maybe do 20, 30 dollars. And it's like an insult. It's like, I paid 80 bucks for this game, like literally two weeks ago. But it's because the secondhand market is now becoming a thing of the past. And we've let it happen. And because we've let it happen, we are the problem. We are the ones who allowed that to happen. We are the ones who allowed the secondhand market to essentially be erased. And it's not erased yet. As I said, I've said it, I'm going to keep saying it because I know there's going to be some idiot in the comments who says, but it's still available on Marketplace. Ha ha. Yes, it's still available on Marketplace. You can still sell your copies. You can go and list your stuff on Marketplace or eBay and ask $400 for one cartridge. You can do whatever you want with your games. But I'm talking about physical retail locations, like a JB Hi-Fi, like an EB Games, where you can actually walk into that shop and get the actual cartridge. Now, I mean, you have things like the Salvos for movies where you can get DVDs, but they're not selling 4Ks or anything. They're not selling secondhand 4Ks. And as CEX, which is kind of the last one selling secondhand 4Ks in that, and I think cash converters kind of do it as well, you are kind of seeing the death of even the physical media space in terms of pre-owned. And yes, DVD is still going to survive, and Blu-ray to an extent is going to survive. But people aren't donating their 4Ks, and also when they want to sell them, they're not going to just donate them. They're going to say, hey, I paid $40 for that. I want to I want to get some money back for that. So at that point, you see like these absorbent amounts of money for like Bad Boys on eBay, and it's like $200 or whatever, $150 to get your hands on Bad Boy on Blu-ray, or 4K Blu-ray. And it's because the secondhand market has went away in stores, and it has went away in trade-ins, it has went away, and we've allowed it to happen because we've become reliant on convenience. And we've become reliant on this whole system of, oh, we, we can just trust the big industry to look after us. I have never trusted the big industry. They are going to do what they're going to do. The reason I bought a new iPhone wasn't because, oh, right, Apple AI, and why did you pick up that silly little Apple iPhone 16 Pro? Why did you pick that up? Because... They haven't even done the AI thing. They promised you this feature and they didn't give it to you. I didn't care. All I looked at was, oh, my old phone has US... My old phone has Lightning. My new phone has USB-C. And it's got a bit of a better battery life. And it's got a bit of a better camera. 
that was all it took to sell me on the new phone. Hey, what can I do? I can do this, this and this for me. It's got those new features that they keep promising us, but that's not going to influence me. And I think long term, it's going to be better for me. And that's the thing. I'm not going to go and trade in my old phone. I'll give it to a family member or whatever. I'm going to say, hey, this phone, nothing wrong with this phone. Like, um, do you want it? Like, it still works. Nothing's wrong with it. I just felt it was worth the upgrade. That's the idea. And it's like, I, and that's another thing. Even with my phone, I could give it to a family member. Let's say you have finished playing, I don't know, what's a game here? Let's say you've finished playing WWE 2K24. Let's say you've finished playing this and you're like, okay, I finished playing that now. I could put it on my shelf or I could give it to a friend. Hey, you like WWE? Well, check this game out. Let me know what you think about this. And then they can play it. Whereas if you're reliant on the market, on the um, digital stores, you can't do that. You can't give it to a friend. And if the secondhand market's gone away as well, what happens if you want to go to, back to that game in three or four years, but they've stopped selling it on the store? The secondhand market is really the only choice. You can't buy 2K22 right now. You can't buy that on PlayStation Store. I don't even believe it's available on Xbox Store. Because they pulled it. That's the first thing they did when they released the new versions. They pulled the old versions because they want you on the new version. They don't want you to get a discount on the old version. They want you playing the new game because it means that they can say, hey, we have X amount of monthly players. I just think we are going way too lightly bet towards this whole idea of convenience. And it's just disappointing, to be honest. Because we are becoming reliant on it. And the second-hand market is usually the first thing that will go. I remember when PlayStation games were get, PlayStation 2 games were really still at EB Games, but they were trying to clear them. They were like, we need to get rid of these things because PS3's here. We need to get rid of PS2 games. And they were selling those things for like a dollar. And some of them they weren't even selling. They were just like, oh, just send them to the tip. Like, we can't even sell them. Donate them to the salvos. Let's get rid of them. We want them out of the store because that floor space is valuable to us. We can put PS3 games there. We can put stuff plushies or whatever. You know, we can put anything. We can put pop finals there when pop finals took off. So they just were like, yeah, just write off, just send it to wherever. We just want it out of our store. And then what happened to those, what happened to FIFA 2008 or whatever? What happened to FIFA or whatever? Because those were a lot of the $1 games that no one was buying. And I'm not a fan of soccer. I'm not, I'm no expert on soccer. I'm not a fan of soccer. But, except our Tillies are doing really well. The Australian women's team are doing freaking awesome. I will say the Tillies are doing well. But, you know, I'm saying more about, we have, I'm just trying to formulate my thoughts, guys. We are really becoming this society of, well, we don't want that, but no one's going to bother to preserve it. But also, what happens in 50-odd years when you're like, oh, we, we've got a whole collection of Nintendo 64 games, or we've got a whole collection of PS2 games, but we're just missing FIFA 2008. That game is so hard to find. FIFA 2008 probably sold, what, a couple of hundred million copies or something? Or oh, not a hundred million, that's a bit generous. Let's say 25 million copies. Now, a game like FIFA might be the first one that gets chucked away because people are like, oh, there's a million different versions of FIFA. We can just chuck that old version away. So you have to think probably 10, 15, 20 million of those get chucked away. So you have, what, 5 million in secondhand collections. Some are still sealed. Some are still whatever. But that's why they climb to such a high amount on eBay because people are like, oh, no one is selling this. What? It's FIFA. It was, it sold how many copies, but no one's selling this? Oh, my gosh. I better ask $400 for this. That's the secondhand market on the internet. Because people see, oh, well, there's nobody actually holding this accountable. So I'm going to ask the most extreme amount I can possibly ask. It's like I can list my dragon boxes up there. They're unsealed, but I can list my dragon boxes for five grand. Doesn't mean I'm going to get them, but I'll, I'm sure people who want them will be like, oh, that's a bit steep for the dragon boxes. Oh, I mean, they're probably worth, what, two and a half, three grand at this point? I bought them for like one, 1.2, 1 1.3 or whatever. Grand this is, I'm talking about 1,300, 1, 1,400, somewhere around that ballpark. But, you know, if I was selling those today because they've went up in value, I could probably get two and a half, but because there's nothing else listed online, the whole set, there's no one's listing the whole sets, I, would say, I could ask, oh, well, I think I should probably sell these for five, six grand because no one else has it listed. Whereas if everyone was deciding to sell at the same time and there was an amount of them out there in the secondhand market, I would say, oh, everyone's selling theirs. I should probably be a bit more reserved with mine. I should probably go... Ask what they're worth. Ask what everyone else is going, but maybe do a dollar below what someone else is asking because I want to offload them. So the second-hand market is good because it's accountability. And it's also a level of safety because it means that they are going to hold things to account. They're going to say, oh, well, this pricing is inflating. Let's quickly 
let's quickly correct that by putting a bunch in the market and flooding the market with like FIFA or whatever or WWE or whatever because the prices go up and then people will be like, oh, the prices are up. I should probably sell mine. But everyone looks at the top listed eBay price and doesn't look at the sold listings. It's not what people are asking. It's what people are buying it for, what people are paying. That's how you determine the exact value of uh, PS Vita games. You don't look at the what people are asking because I've saw people ask $150 for Ratchet and Clank. I want $150 for that. It's not worth that. People are accurately playing, as I looked it up in Australia, they are paying maybe 85 for that game, cover and all, like brand, like not brand new, but like very good like condition. And that's the thing, like people will, people will ask whatever they're going to ask on the secondhand market. People are going to ask whatever they want on eBay or Facebook marketplace or whatever. But having the secondhand market in stores and reflective in stores like a CEX, it at least holds some account to it and says, no, this game hasn't inflated. We've got 10 different, we've got 10 different copies of San Andreas right there. And now that CEX is kind of getting out of PS2 space, I mean, they're still, they're still buying PS2 games, but it's really dwindled down to a certain amount. Now that they're starting to really pull away from that, people are on Facebook and whatever is asking, oh, well, there's no availability at CEX. I better list this for $50. Whereas five months, six months ago, before they really started pulling away, you could see those games easily for $15 on, online. And it's because there's no accountability. And yeah, let me know what you think. Watch the video. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll get back to you. Peace.